Hello, my musicians, and welcome to this week's music lesson. We're going to take a look at another composer named Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Remember in the fall, we talked a lot about Beethoven, and we read from our my favorite composer book. Um, we're going to do that again today, the lives of the musician, the good times, the bad times, and what the neighbors thought. So we're going to do that today, and maybe you already know some music by Mozart. Maybe you already know some fun facts. But stay tuned, and we will do some together. All right, so here's a picture of little Mozart when he was just a boy. People call him a child prodigy, which means that he was really, really good at something before most adults were. Okay, um, you'll listen for these facts too that I put on the screen um, when we're reading the book. He was born in Salzburg, Austria, which if you guys have seen the, the musical Sound of Music, that also takes place in Salzburg, Austria. So there was my connection there. Um, but he was born in 1756, so that was before America became a country, before a Revolutionary War. Um, not too far before, but definitely before. He started to play the piano when he was only four years old. He looked up to his big sister, and she was a musician. Um, Mozart's father was a professional musician, musician, and that's where he got his training. Um, he began his professional music career at the age of six, and he traveled all over Europe performing for um, various people. When he was eight years old, he was composing full symphony orchestras, that music that goes on for a long time with the full symphony. And um, he started writing those at eight. How many of you out there are eight? Isn't that crazy? And then at age 11, he started to write his own operas. Now remember, opera is um, kind of like musicals are today. There was dancing and ballet and singing and orchestras, and they didn't have Disney Plus or Netflix. So opera was one of the main forms of entertainment at the time. And when he was only 11, he wrote his first opera. Isn't that incredible? Um, Mozart, as you'll hear, was often kind of sick as a child. I don't know if it was from his touring schedule or, or not taking care of himself, but he was a sickly kid. And then lastly, you'll hear of how much he loved animals. So let's dive into our book and read about Mozart. While we listen to the book about Mozart, we're gonna be listening to a little bit of his music too. Here is his symphony number 40. It'll start as I read. So here we go, we're in our book with uh, the big head Mozart and I'm gonna read about his childhood. Until he was three, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart was an ordinary baby. Then he began climbing up on the bench and imitating the piano playing of his talented older sister, Maria Anna. At age four, he made up his own compositions and then he started to study violin. He turned on the music just a little bit. There we go. He insisted that all of his activities be accompanied by music. Mozart's father noticed that it was difficult to teach him music. He seemed to know everything already. By the time he was five, he would stay up late, practicing all night by candlelight. The next year, six-year-old Mozart went on tour, traveling by stagecoach all around the bumpy roads of Europe. And from all of his travels, young Mozart eventually learned to speak 15 languages. That's crazy. He played for royalty and well-known musicians of the day. At eight years old, he was composing symphonies. We already knew that. And at 11, his first opera. When composing, Mozart wore an apron to keep the ink off of his clothes. He wore little velvet coats with lace ruffles and gold embroidery and a little gold sword at his side. You can look at this picture. Do you see how finely he's dressed? Very fine. He was known then as the most kissed little boy in Europe. Today we think of him as the greatest musical prodigy who ever lived. Remember that word prodigy? He was one of the earliest professional musicians there were. Mozart had a strange and exhausting childhood. He was often so ill that some people worried about how much longer he would live. He was sweet and affectionate, most anxious to please. His special talent meant he never had to go to school. His father gave him lessons. Mozart especially liked math and covered tablecloths and wallpaper with rows and rows of math figures. That makes sense to me. Remember, music is very... Um, orderly, and so was math. So the fact that he understood music really well means he also understood math really well. Mozart loved animals. He sent the family dog, a terrier named Bimperl, 
greetings from cities all over Europe. Isn't that funny? He would like send home um, notes to his dog. In London, he broke off a concert to run after a cat that had wandered in. Later in life, he owned two other dogs, a pet grasshopper, and various birds. As a child, Mozart was cute, with rosy cheeks and bright eyes. As an adult, though, his skin turned yellowish, scarred from a disease called smallpox, and his blue eyes were bulgy. He was very concerned with his appearance. He took care to have very elegant clothes all through his life, and he had a barber work on his hair much more often than most people did. Later on in life, Mozart fell in love with a woman named Constanza, and she was also a musician like Mozart. And that is Mozart's early years. At this point, we're going to move in and talk about Mozart's adult life. And here are some things to listen for in the story. Um, you'll hear that music was his whole life. Um, it's what he kept from when he was a kid all the way through his life. Um, it says that he wrote more quickly, he wrote music more quickly than almost any other composer in history. That's crazy. Um, to play all of Mozart music in a row, like if we were to start it now and just let all of the pieces he's ever written go, it would take him 202 hours. And that's over eight and a half days without any break or rest or anything. That's a lot of music. And then lastly, we're going to talk about the things that Mozart wrote about his relationship with God and how his dependence on prayer. I think you'll find that really interesting, too. So um, we're going to dive into his adult life and we're going to listen to a little Ina Kleina knock music, which he wrote as well. All right. Have you heard that before? It's one of my favorite Mozart pieces. Music was the one thing that made Mozart's face light up. He usually woke up at six, composed music until nine, gave music lessons till one, although he really didn't like teaching. And then he had lunch at someone's house where he was expected to entertain the guests and the hosts. Then unless there was a concert to attend, he composed far into the night. He could get by on his little four hours of sleep before he was back up and composing again. Doctors told him he needed to have a little more exercise, which may have been why he eventually bought a pool table for his house. He wrote music more quickly than almost any other composer in history. You knew that. And he sometimes put things off to the very last minute. Are any of you like Mozart? Are you procrastinating some of your work? If he had to work through the night, his wife, Constance, would tell him tales about Cinderella or Aladdin to keep his mind alert so he could keep writing music. His best ideas came when he was in a good mood, alone and undisturbed. What a delight this is, I cannot tell, he once wrote. All this inventing, this producing, it takes place in a pleasing, lively dream. He could even write down his music ideas at meals. He really liked to eat liver dumplings and sauerkraut. How does that sound to eat? He could also write music while talking with his friends or even while playing pool. Once he even held his hand, his wife's hand, while she was giving birth, and, and with his other hand, he wrote several pieces of music. He was an ultimate multitasker. One day, a visitor found Mozart and his wife dancing in their house, and Mozart explained that they had run out of firewood and were trying to stay warm. Now, Mozart, as an adult, spent money faster than he could earn it, and he was always in debt. Part of the problem was that the aristocrats would pay him for his music with things like watches, and other fine things, but not the cash that he needed to live on. Um, later on in life, um, a letter that he wrote asking for a loan, like a letter that he wrote to the bank, was sold 200 years later for over 100 times the amount he had originally asked the bank for. So that's what, what his fame became. There were plenty of people who didn't like Mozart. They thought he was rude or immature or irresponsible. The one person who knew Mozart well said that she never heard him say one serious thing. He could be impatient sometimes with people. Although his father was always bombarding him with advice on how to make money and meet the right people, Mozart had trouble finding and keeping jobs. Once he lost a court appointment by being obnoxious and got himself literally kicked out of court. There's the door. I will have nothing more to do with such a villain, the man said who fired him. Now, Mozart was scared of ghosts and loud noises. He could be kind of superstitious. 
which explains his reaction to the tall, mysterious stranger who came to his house one night, dressed all in gray. The stranger commissioned him to write a wet requiem mass, which is uh, what they used to do, a funeral mass, music for a funeral. The stranger would never give his name, but kept nagging Mozart to finish. Fearful and convinced somehow that he was writing his own funeral music, Mozart worked feverishly. Eventually, the stranger was revealed to be a messenger from an eccentric count who had a habit of having well-known composers write something he could pass off as his own private performances. But by that time, Mozart had died of kidney failure and malnutrition at the age of 35. He died really young. The last part of Mozart's life we're going to talk about is his spiritual life. Now we know that the man looks at the outward appearance, but that the Lord looks at the heart. But we do know what Mozart has written um, in this book that I have called The Spiritual Lives of the Great Composers. We have different excerpts from his letters um, where he wrote down things he felt. Um, so in this book, it says <clears throat> that, excuse me, <clears throat> prayer accompanied a major part of Mozart's life. Um, his true faith was based on a private relationship between himself and Christ. Mozart's letters are often punctuated with expressions of faith and praise to God, as well as concern for the spiritual lives of those around him. He wrote, It will greatly assist such happiness as I may have to hear that my dear father and my dear sister have submitted to the will of God with resignation and fortitude and have put their whole confidence in him in the firm assurance that he, talking about God, orders all things for the best. One of the dozens of letters the composer wrote to his father details his sensitivity to spiritual matters and his reliance on God. This is what he wrote. Papa must not worry, for God is ever before my eyes. I realize his omnipotence and I fear his anger, but I also recognize his love, his compassion, and his tenderness toward his creatures. He will never forsake his own. If it is according to his will, so let it be according to mine. Thus all will be well and I must needs be happy and contented. So there's just a few things that Mozart wrote about his own faith and his own belief in God. Now here comes the fun part. We are going to play a Mozart concert in your own house. Okay, so get your family members together. We're gonna to do a musication video. There are four separate parts. Now, if you have more than four family members that want to do this with you, you could obviously double up on the parts, but decide what you're going to do for those four parts. Now, musication recommends that one part be like um, drumming on a box, um, one part be maybe hitting a metal can to make sound, or using um, forks and spoons to hit together to make a sound, or some kind of lid, but you can be creative. If you've got your own instruments at home, if you wanna do body percussion and maybe one group claps and one snaps, you can totally do that. Um, but then we are going to perform Rondo a la Turca together in your own um, houses, a little bit of Mozart concert. So get ready, grab your people and get ready for some Mozart.
musicians, how did it go? How did your Mozart concert go? I hope you had fun learning a little bit about Mozart and playing some music today by this very famous composer. Now, on your portfolio, once you've done with this lesson, go ahead and leave me a comment and tell me what your favorite Mozart fact was. Way to go, musicians! <laughs>